Hello! So, as someone who is extremely passionate about history and wants to be a future historian, I study the ancient world a lot. A lot. I think about it almost all the time. And I see it endlessly fantasized in movies like 300 and Gladiator. I always see the argument, who is the best? Which place had the best culture, best civilization, what have you? And I would say this list is a top 10 favorites list, but it's not. It is way more objective than it is subjective because believe me, I have done my research and I'm basing a lot of the criteria on historical fact. Anything older than a thousand years old qualifies. So we will be looking at some people in the common era. Without further ado, let's get into this list. The top 10 best ancient cultures and civilizations according to this huge history buff. Number 10, the Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphates. The Muslims are in the house. Yes, a small religion that began in the Arabian Peninsula. This thing rose Phoenix like out of Mecca and Medina to spread a huge empire or caliphate over most of East Asia, some of Africa, and even one part of Europe, Spain. Islamic Cordoba was one of the most thriving centers for culture in that period of time. And in the 7th century, the Umayyad Mosque in Cordoba, built by Abd al-Rahman I, was built in one year. That's right, one of the most beautiful and amazing mosques in the world was built in 365 days. So, all you medieval cathedrals that took like hundreds of years to build, you need to step your game up. My favorite thing about the Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphates, these Islamic empires, would have to be how science and religion had a better relationship than Jay-Z and Beyonce. Muslim mathematicians made important strides in algebra to explain Islamic inheritance law. They developed trigonometry to help people turn towards Mecca. The Muslim scholars translated the works of Hippocrates, Archimedes, and the physician Galen, so they advanced medicine. Ibn Sina wrote the canon of medicine, which has been called the first modern book on surgery. Muslim philosophers translated words by Ptolemy and Aristotle, and thus Aristotle, besides him being wrong about everything, he was a jumping point for learning in the Islamic world. Another note on the Umayyad and Abbasid Caliphates, the Islamic empires, they really sowed the seeds for the Renaissance, especially when it came to scientific thought, and the Renaissance's second greatest mind, sorry I have a little bias towards Leonardo da Vinci, Nicholas Copernicus. He discovered the heliocentric solar system, as we all know, but one of his diagrams is so similar to a proof found in a Muslim mathematics book that it's almost impossible that he didn't have access to it. So, basically what I'm saying is Muslim scholars helped Nicholas Copernicus discover the heliocentric solar system, most likely. And without these Islamic empires, we wouldn't have the wisdom of the ancient Greeks, and we wouldn't have a lot of math. And, yeah, for all those who hate the base 10 number system, the numbers we use to denote it are called Arabic numerals, so if you hate math class, yeah, you can blame the Islamic empires, but don't, because math is important. Number nine, Carthage. I really wish we knew more about these guys. When we think of trade, we may think great societies like the Venetians were great at trade, the Chinese were great at trade, even the Vikings in the 9th and 10th centuries were great at trade. But you want to look at an ancient empire that was so good at commerce, it was unbelievable. You look no further than Carthage in modern day North Africa. They made their empire not out of conquest, but out of commerce and business and trade and money. They were founded in about 800 BC by Queen Alyssa or Alisar or Ditto. One of these things is not like the others. The people who lived in Carthage and the Carthaginian Empire were known as Phoenician people, or Punic people. Carthage ruled over 300 cities at its height. They even conquered some places in the Mediterranean, like some places in Asia Minor, North Africa, and they also occupied places in Sardinia and Sicily, two islands in Italy. This pissed off the Romans, and thus the Romans got mad at Carthage. They had a bunch of Punic wars. Hannibal crossed the Alps with war elephants. 
and then Rome destroyed Carthage because they got cranky. Frickin' Romans. Number eight, the Mayans. Yeah, we now turn to the people who were wrong about the end of the world, but who cares? Founded on the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day Mexico and Guatemala, this was one of the most inhospitable places to have an ancient civilization. A very violent and, under, and unpredictable wet season and, uh, well, dry, dry season. The Mayans founded their civilizations in, in around 2600 BCE, give or take, and they built up with pyramids, great cities, trade networks, and uh, a great influence for future Mesoamerican empires like the Incas and the Aztecs. They also developed a magnificent language, architecture, and they used the stars, or soul, and the solar, the sun, to create their own calendar, which ended on December 21st, 2012, and that's why a bunch of conspiracy theorists were like, ah, 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 ah. They invented this great game, this great ball game, which had a weighted ball. We, it's in a great scene in the road to El Dorado. And they also had weapons made out of obsidian. Despite living in harsh conditions and despite having a kind of a harsh life, the Mayans powered through and became one of the greatest ancient civilizations to ever walk this earth. And in my opinion, the Mayans are the greatest cult pre-European culture in the Americas. Number seven, the Persians. The Parthians, the Sasanians, and the Achaemenids. N no offense, Europe, but not a lot of countries in the world have as much a complex and interesting history as Iran or Persia. These guys have spread their influence all over the world. In history, in all of history, if you were a new civilization or empire, if you wanted to prove yourself in combat, you had to be up against the Persians, even if you were the Mongols, who is so often the exception in history. The Persians even helped develop the previously mentioned um, Islamic Empire with the Abbasids, because the Abbasids basically came from Persia. The Romans had to fight the Parthians, the Greeks had to fight the Achaemenids, and speaking of the Achaemenids, in my opinion, the best. Founded in um, about 550 BCE by King Cyrus the Great, who ended the Babylonian exile, which was a sad period in Jewish history, which ensured that Cyrus got great press in the Bible. The Persians pretty much conquered the entire Middle East, Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Asia Minor, including Anatolia, which there are Ionian Greeks who lived in Anatolia, the Ionian Greeks pissed off the Anatolian Persian rulers. This made King Xerxes mad, and of course the movie 300 happened. If you were to live in the 5th, 4th century BCE, in my opinion, the Achaemenid Empire was by far the place to do it. And as I said, they were some of the best military powers in the ancient world with their immortals, class, and their incredibly advanced weapon. And they also had a really good idea of making decisions. A council of elders would discuss ideas when they were drunk and when they were sober, and the idea had to sound good in both states. That was dumb, but it was also really smart. Number six, the Indus River Valley Civilization. One of the first civilizations on this planet finding themselves in between the Indus and Samori rivers in modern day Pakistan and India. These guys knew how to build a city. And they were also one of the biggest and most widespread ancient civilizations because archaeologists have found over 1,500 sites. The, the Indus people built great cities such as Harappa and especially Mohenjo-Daro. And these cities were great because they were oriented to catch the wind, so it would provide the city with a kind of a natural air conditioning. And they had a natural sewage system that was better than 17th century London. Mohenjo-Daro had a giant complex called the Great Bath. Nice naming historians. It was probably a giant baptismal pool, but we don't know for sure. Also, we can't translate, uh, currently translate the Indus River Valley Civilization's writing. The archaeologists have found pictures inspiring the Hindu deities because, if you didn't know, current Indians and Pakistanis did not evolve from the people who lived in the Indus Valley. Those people came down from the Caucasus and settled there and thus modern day Indians and Pakistanis, but there is strong evidence that Hinduism evolved from what the ancient Hindus had, which is, if that's true, Hinduism is indeed the oldest religion in the world. Number five, 
Mesopotamia. Up there with the people of the Indus Valley civilization for the oldest civilization on Earth. The people of Mesopotamia were Meso, or in between, the Tigris and Euphrates Batomoi, or rivers. Unlike the Indus River, which was really reliable and easy to navigate, the Tigris and Euphrates rivers were not. They were violent, they were difficult to navigate, and they were unpredictable. And a lot of slave labor was required for basic irrigation to grow crops. Mesopotamia endured and paved the way for guys like Hammurabi, the guy who first came up with an eye for an eye. And he also gave a new definition to the phrase, tough on crime. Mesopotamia also invent, helped invent writing and taxes, so every time you bitch about taxes, you can now blame Mesopotamia. The Assyrians also came up with the most reliable and sustainable way to rule humans in world history and Star Wars history, the Empire. I also have to mention this. In the Royal Ontario Museum in my hometown of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, one of their best artifacts is the lion mural that was on the wall of King Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon, which was in Mesopotamia. Every time I look at it, I'm just like, what? That thing is almost 4,300 years old, by the way. Number four, the ancient Greeks. Democracy, art, philosophy, theater, science, a bunch of feta cheese and olives. Wait. That might be more contemporary. Ancient Greek civilization truly is one of the most fascinating and intriguing civilizations I've ever gotten the privilege to study. Often said to be the foundation of Western civilization, the Greeks are said to have invented the democracy, even though their government was notoriously corrupt and limited to free males. The ancient Greeks also had a very vibrant society and rich culture. Even though they accepted things like pedophilia, infanticide, slavery, and had misogyny so deeply ingrained, it boggles my mind. Why are they at number four if all I've done is complain? Quite simply, the vibrancy and richness of their culture was too much to ignore. And they truly did spread a lot of great culture throughout history and the world. Even though Alexander the Great was a brutal conqueror, truly, he did spread Greek from Greece and Macedonia to as far as Afghanistan and India. They had their first historian, Herodotus, even though Thucydides was much better. Pericles' funeral oration in the Peloponnesian War had rhetoric that wouldn't sound out of place today. But best of all, ancient Greek theater and fiction was absolutely incredible. From Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, to Oedipus by Sophocles, to the excellent comedy, fart jokes, and social commentary by Aristophanes. The Greeks also had my all-time favorite warrior culture, aside from the samurai of medieval Japan, the Spartans. This has nothing to do with the fact that 300 is one of my favorite action movies of all time. This is Sparta! Even though the Spartans had a very brutal way of life for the men, they, they also embraced freedom for women that was pretty much unheard of anywhere else in the ancient world, especially the rest of Greece. Number three, the ancient Romans, Republic and Empire. Get out your togas, gladiuses, and sandals because the die is cast. The Romans were a violent, funny, jovial, and rather intriguing society. They were a city-state, an aristocracy, a kingdom, and a republic, but that whole time, really before the Punic Wars, that whole thing was comprised of the area around Rome. This eternal city transformed from a republic with a bunch of bickering senators like Cato to an empire with crazy asshole emperors and some good emperors. Trajan's my favorite. The Romans truly were engineers like no other at the time, using ingenuity and building materials that quite simply were advanced for its time. And even though, you know, their sense of sports and entertainment was extremely violent and horrifying to us today, the Circus Maximus and Colosseum are still incredible buildings. However, in my opinion, the Romans' best projects were not stuff like the monuments or the Pantheon, but their aqueducts, which ferried water into the city, their bridges, 
and the Imperial Forums, specifically Trajan's Forum, which had the, sh the world's first shopping center. And of course, I like the thermal baths, especially Caracalla's bath. Who knew it took a tyrannical ass to make one of the most luxurious places in Rome? They also did a lot of great building abroad, like they had arches in Morocco that told tales of conquest in Scotland. That's incredible. For those who would take Tacitus' supposed stance on Roman conquest, I know how brutal it was. I'm just saying the world would be a lot different without the Romans. Number two. Now we go to the east, to a land steeped in thousands of years of history. To a place that follows the one way and Confucian doctrines that they have been following since 2,000 years ago when they rose out of war. China. China is awesome and I will hear no arguments about it. They kept an imperial dynastic system that started in 1600 BCE with the Shang. That's incredible. Also, some of the best Chinese dynasties were in the ancient world, specifically the Han, the Tang, and the Song. We're gonna look at some stats. The Tang ruled over 80 million people across 4 million square miles. And in the 11th century, which is a thousand years ago, by the way, China was producing as much iron as Europe would be able to produce in the 18th century. And when they ran out of iron for coins, they, they invented paper money. And they also manufactured and shipped porcelain throughout the world, which eventually traded to Europeans, which is why we now call porcelain China. Now, jumping back about a thousand years, the Han Dynasty had emperors who ruled benevolently, like Emperor Wen, and he encouraged more intellectualism, and he stopped burning books, and it was his rule was pretty much a paradise for nerds and Confucian scholars. And China has been one of the biggest economic powers in the world since before the Common Era because they were the only nation that could produce silk, which was one of the biggest materials for trade in the ancient world. And they got stinking rich from it. Sorry if I got really Chinese crazy back there, but you understand why. Numero uno, or number one. Throughout this list, we have looked at people who lived, worked, and fought for certain deities. From Allah, or God, to Baal, to Shock, to Zoroaster, to Shiva, to Gilgamesh, to Zeus, to Jupiter, and to John Yu, or later the Buddha. Number one goes to Ra, Horus, Set, Osiris, Neith, and Isis. That's right, ancient Egypt. This ancient civilization lasted longer than Western civilization has even been a thing and ran its course before the West was even born. It lasted a thousand years longer than Christianity and about 800 years longer than China. Conquered and freed, expanded and isolated, experiencing a golden age and turmoil times. The sands of Egypt once held a people who did amazing things at a time where you almost really couldn't do amazing things. Under the pharaoh Tutmosi III, the first recorded battle took place at an estimated April 16, 1457 BCE in the Siege of Megiddo, which has now become the base word for Armageddon. They experienced high times with pharaohs like Hatshepsut and Ramesses II, and times of turmoil and confusion with guys like Akhenaten. Men feared time, yet time feared the pyramids. I would believe so, since the pyramids at Giza have been standing for over 4,000 years and aren't going anywhere. The ancient Egyptians lived in the best place you could live in the ancient world, along the Nile River, the longest river in the world, but also the best river to grow crops and have livestock because it would flood reliably twice a year, producing nutrient-rich silt, and planting was so easy that ancient Egyptians would just toss their seeds onto the ground and have their cattle freaking stamp it in. And irrigation was so easy that all they really had to do was dig a hole. That's a gross oversimplification. Even though Egypt tried to spread outside their homeland and ultimately failed, it lasted for a lot longer than any than a lot of us can even imagine. And when ancient Egypt finally fell to the Romans, they didn't fall quietly. And by the way, King Tut, I'm sure you wanted to do more than your life than just chain, than just turn your back on Aten and change your name to Tutankhamun instead of Tutankhamun. 
Anyway, that's it for my top 10 ancient civilizations and cultures. And like I said, I did do my research for this list, so this was a lot more objective than it was subjective. Anyway, Namadi Melon, peace out, A-Town Down. I'll see you next time.